What's up guys, my name is Jack. I make videos about all things tech. And today I wanted to talk about the iPad and show you some of the iPad apps and widgets that I like to use on mine. Most of the apps that I will show you will run on any iPad, but this is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the M2 chip. I love this thing, it's my go-to device for browsing the web or watching videos but there are some really powerful apps that you can use to just get things done. I did also just recently do a what's on my iPhone video as well. So if you're interested in that, I will link to it below. We'll look at some of my home screen setups, some widgets, some apps for productivity and designing, and as well, some games at the end. And I will try and link to everything in the description. This first home screen is just full of all the things that I want the fastest access to. And it is mostly a lot of Apple's own apps. And these have gotten particularly good in recent years, particularly the Reminders and the Notes app. But one thing that Apple just hasn't been able to do is make a calculator for the iPad. So that's why I've got the Solves app here. Solves looks very Apple. You can actually change the theme in the settings to classic orange to match that on the iPhone. The default is this sort of blue color. There's a history panel on the side for going back to different calculations that you've done in the past. So if you make a mistake, you can quickly jump back and you know grab the numbers and the results from there. It works really well in split view. And if you didn't know, there's a really fast way that you can put two apps side by side. And that is by going into multitasking, grabbing one and then just dropping it on top of the other one. And then you've got two apps side by side and you can change the size of either window and the Solves app works perfectly just on the side of the screen as well. So you can have it next to you know, your Notes app or whatever else you're doing. I've got threads here and this isn't actually an app. This is actually a web app and I'll show you how I did this in a second, but there is no threads app on the iPad. There's also no Instagram app because I don't know why Instagram just can't make iPad apps. You can use the phone versions of the apps on the iPad, but you can also just grab them straight from the Safari browser. And to do that, just head to threads.net Tap on the share icon in the top right. It pops up the share sheet and then you just need to scroll down to add to home screen. Tap on that and you can rename it if you so wish and then just tap the add button. This then puts it down on the home screen which you can open whenever you need to and it's basically running Safari but without the toolbar at top so you get this nice big full screen experience. Next up I want to show you Flipboard. This is like a, a really cool sort of like magazine style news app. You've got lots of big artwork and pictures. You can sort of flip through to different articles. You can add your own topics or websites that you might want to follow. So I've got like travel, photography, apps, gadgets, Apple of course, even sort of specific websites as well. So I've got quite a lot of tech websites here. You can flip through and see different articles and tap on ones that you like. It's a really nice way to sort of catch up on the news that really makes use of the big display on the iPad. And it really feels like you're just looking through a big digital magazine. It does also come with some widgets in different sizes. So I've got a widget here, a medium size one, and you can set it to a particular topic that you wanna to follow and then keep that straight on the home screen. Next up is another sort of news app and that is Feed. And I did show that in my iPhone video, but it's also really nice to use on the iPad. This is a news aggregator similar to Flipboard, but this is like a much more sort of traditional layout and you can pick and choose the topics that you wanna follow and everything gets synced between devices. And for this, I mostly use it for tech stuff, but there is a nice sort of explore tab that they've recently added if you wanna sort of look at some different topics that you might be interested in. And it too also has some widgets that you can customize and use on the home screen. And with this one, you can even customize how they look as well. Then here, I've also got a quick shortcut to my website, jckrgb.com. Take a look and let me know what you think. And of course, I've got YouTube and the YouTube Studio app. And just to cover the widgets that I've got here, up top, this is actually a shortcuts widget with buttons that trigger different focus modes. So to explain a bit about how it works, I've got this main page, then I've got this sort of productivity page, and then a gaming page as well. And when I tap one of these, it changes the focus mode, jumping to that home screen and then disabling the others. And it also turns off sort of certain notifications and stuff so I can really focus on what it is that I'm doing. You can set up focus modes in the settings app. There's a, a whole page just for it. So for example, on the gaming one, I have this set to only show my gaming home screen. Once you've made a few sort of home screens and linked them to specific focus modes, all you need to do then is set up the buttons in the shortcuts app. So to sort of break down and show you how it works, I'll sort of show you the gaming one. This is the script that you need and it is super simple to make. Search for the set focus mode action, add that to the script, set it to turn on the gaming focus mode that you've created and leave it on until you've turned it off. And up here, you can give it a name and a sort of icon and choose a color for it. And then you can do that for all of the buttons that you want to appear 
on the home screen. And I've put all of these in a folder which I can link to with the shortcuts widget on the home screen. Tom over at Bike Review has an amazing video going into way more detail into how to set all of this up. So I'll link to that video below for you. And by putting the widget in the corner on all of your home screens, you can quickly have fast access to those buttons to jump to each home screen and then just sort of shut off all of those distractions using the focus modes. Down in the dock, there's a few apps that I wanna highlight starting with Photomator. This is a really powerful photo editor, kind of a bit similar to Lightroom if you've ever used that. This has so many features, it has built-in filters, all of the editing tools that you'll need, and they're always adding new features as well. They just recently added support for displaying HDR photos. By the way, these were shot on my iPhone 15 Pro Max using the Shift Cam long range macro lens, which lets you capture just insane amounts of detail using the 48 megapixel main camera. I'll link to my video on those in the description. And the best thing is that all of the edits are non-destructive, so you can always revert back to the original image if you make a mistake, or you just wanna get that original image back. It's really easy to copy edits across photos for some batch editing. There is also an iPhone app as well with all of the same features, but I love editing on the iPad with its bigger display. And it actually makes editing fun to do. It's free to download with a one-time purchase to unlock all the features or a subscription, whichever works for you. Also down here, I've got Final Cut for the iPad. Now, I've not really had a chance to really delve into this yet other than playing around with the sort of sample timeline that it gives you, but I really wanna use it to try editing some shorts and reels. It's not quite there for me to be able to edit full videos just yet. There's no support for editing off an external hard drive, which is kind of crazy. Come on, Apple, what is this? And there's no like proper color grading support either. They do give you, you know, actual vector scopes and things, but there's no color wheels or hue saturation curves. And you can send a project from the iPad to the Mac version, but then you can't send it back again, which is a bit weird, but I am glad that Apple finally brought this over to the iPad, but I do think it just needs a few more extra features before I can really use it properly. Next up, I wanna show you Crouton. This is an absolutely amazing app for saving all of your own recipes or the ones that you come across online. If you find a recipe that you like, you can copy the URL from you know, the BBC or something. Crouton detects it, populates all of the fields with cooking times, ingredients, measurements, all of the steps that you need to follow. It even grabs the image from the URL if you need to jump back and you can add your own notes and any nutrition info. You can even have it add all of the ingredients you need to your shopping list. The iPad comes in really, really handy in the kitchen as a sort of cookbook and Crouton keeps all of your recipes in one place. I love it. On to productivity and we'll go on to the next home screen for that. With Notion, this is how I basically organize everything that I do here on YouTube. It's kind of just like a giant database of notes. I've got all of my individual video projects here, any research and notes, my scripts, any ideas I have for videos. I can tag things and keep track of URLs, plan out my release schedule using the calendar view. It might look kind of super complicated and confusing, but it is actually fairly simple once you get your head around it and once you've had a bit of a play around. You might just want to use it for you know more simple things like to-do lists or any goals that you want to keep track of. I'm using a template for video projects that was made by Thomas Frank. He is like the notion god if you want to learn how all of this works and i've modified it a little bit just to make it work better for me but notion is an amazing way to keep track of big projects and tasks and sort of keep everything together and it's how i run this entire channel and there's also a notion widget so you can jump to your projects right from the home screen Next up is Yoink, and this is a great app for just sort of gathering a load of information together. It works fantastically in split view. Let's say that you're a student or you're researching a topic. When you copy something to the clipboard, you can then tap here to save it in the Yoink app for later. You can copy images, text, URLs, or just drag and drop it right in. I like to use it to just sort of dump a load of stuff in when I'm researching for a video. Then later you can have it in split view with your note taking app and just move over all of the bits that you need. Next up I wanna show you Procreate and this just feels like exactly what the iPad was designed for. It's a drawing and painting app and it is how I made my marble wallpapers. It just feels really responsive and fluid. I just love to doodle in it. It comes with tons of brushes with more you can download or find for free or buy. 
It's really powerful. You can have multiple layers with a pretty high resolution canvas. It really depends on your iPad model and its specs. It even records everything that you do. So you can then go and export a time lapse afterwards. It's just really fun to use, really fun to paint in. I wouldn't say that, you know, I'm particularly skilled in sort of digital painting or digital artwork, but even I've been able to use this app and make some pretty decent looking wallpapers. Next up, I've got Pixelmator, and this was made by the same team that made Photomator. This is great for doing simple design mockups. There's a bunch of templates to choose from for things like social posts with a few different grid layouts. I'll sometimes use it just to do sort of like a quick YouTube thumbnail mockup if I've had like an idea and I just wanna see if it works and just get an idea of how it looks. There's some text tools, color tools. It has layers, but they are pretty basic. You can't really do any image masking in this. But a great app for sort of beginners if you're not really sure where to start. For that more complicated stuff, I like to use the Affinity Suite. This is three apps. We've got Photo, Designer, and Publisher. And you can kind of think of these as like Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign if you're used to the Adobe apps. These have just way more tools with proper layers and masking for doing things like placing text behind objects but it does have a bit more of a learning curve compared to Pixelmator, but it is way more powerful once you've gotten to grips with it. Each app is a one-time purchase, and that also gives you a license for the Mac version of the app as well, so you can move between different workflows. Recently, I came across the app called Infinity Paper. As the name suggests, this is basically like an infinite whiteboard for drawing or taking notes. You might want to use it for mind maps. You can Write something and then zoom right in and then just like keep writing or keep panning and just like moving all over the board. And I've not found like a limit to it yet, so it's pretty infinite so far. The Coolers app is really useful as well. It's a really great color utility. If like me, you have no idea about color palettes and what colors go well together, then the Coolers app can kind of do a lot of that for you. You can just sort of generate some color palettes with colors that go well together, or you can just browse some palettes that other people have made and you can tap them and see the color codes and then use those palettes in your next design. Then lastly, we've got the gaming home screen. And I just want to quickly mention a few of these. Mini Metro has a really nice, clean, simple design. You make Metro transit lines for passengers that are represented here as shapes, and you draw Metro lines between each station to let the passengers go wherever they need to go. It starts off pretty chill, but it gets pretty chaotic pretty quickly, but I highly recommend it. I absolutely love this game and I've spent far too long in it. I've also got Mind Swifter for any Minesweeper fans out there, if you had an old Windows PC back in the day. And this is like a nice modern version of an old classic. This is Rollercoaster Tycoon Classic. This is like a, a theme park micromanaging game. I played this for hours as a kid and it came to iPad a few years ago and I'm so glad because I love this game. You can build your own roller coasters, place rides, play different scenarios with different goals and objectives. You can just start drowning the guests if they start to annoy you. If you're into simulator games, then you'll really like this. And you know what? After the GTA 6 trailer dropped a few days ago, I've been really like nostalgic and wanting to go back and play the original PS2 games. You can get all three of these natively on the iPad. And it's you know been pretty fun to sort of revisit some old classics. And it's kind of crazy how far graphics have came to what we just saw in the GTA 6 trailer just a few days ago. And yes, you can play with a controller, so you don't need to use those weird touchscreen controls. So that's been a bit of an overview of my iPad screens and how I've got like everything set up and how I like to use it. If you want to see some of my favorite iPad accessories, then check out my video on that. Let me know if you want to see anything more in depth on some of these, particularly the productivity and the creativity apps, as there's like a lot to cover with those. I feel like they could be their own separate videos. I'll try and link to everything in the description so you can go and check it out for yourself. And if there's any apps that I've missed that you think I should check out next, then drop me a comment below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, that really helps the channel out. And if you want to see more tech videos from me, you can hit subscribe and the bell. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.